The way we talk about fat people is never right. It isn't. We tiptoe around words and phrases, and that's because they're fat. We don't want to offend. We assume they've had a hard life, which makes their fatness more excusable to the unfat. So we start using words that actually sound so much worse than if we just said fat. Chubby, big person, bigger person, big boned, large, fluffy, hefty, overweight, or the worst one of all, obese. What the hell does that even mean? I'll tell you what it means. It's a fancy way for a doctor to get away with calling me fat. People try to be cautious with what they say and how they talk about bigger people. That is until they're not. In fact, I'd argue we say whatever we want about them, definitely behind their backs and sometimes even to their face. We just don't care, not really. And I should know because I was one, a fatty. <laughs> a fatty, fatty, fat, fat, fat. A fat person. That's right. Look at old Chubbs McGee up there, huh? What a fatty. So I get it. I've heard it all, the good and the bad. And people really just don't know how to talk about fat people. They have no idea. Is that what they're called? Are we allowed to say fat? You know, some of my best friends are fat. And even saying fat people out loud makes skinny people tense up. And we can see it happen because you're so skinny and methy looking. Say fat people and skinny people always start to look around for the fat people. It's like what white people do when someone says black people. And everyone will always deny they do this. I don't scan the room for black people or fat people. That's ridiculous. I love Lizzo. <laughs> but you do. We all do. Even fat people. I did it when I was fat and I do it now that I'm skinnier. Think about any time you go to a restaurant. If you see a fat person, what do you do? You judge what they're eating. Doesn't matter what it is. You judge it. They could be eating a salad and you're thinking, too late. It's too late for that salad. That salad was like 10 years ago. Just get the steak. Do it. Get the steak. The loaded baked potato, the chocolate cake. Come on. We all know you want the steak. Just get it. And then what happens if they're eating the steak? <sighs> fat ass. You're gonna die right there at the table, aren't you? <laughs> We're awful to fat people. And I'm forced to include myself in that we because I'm smaller now, but no matter how small I get, I still think like a fat person. And I definitely still notice every little thing about weight and things weight adjacent. When I was little, I was skinny, very, very skinny. I used to suck in my stomach and people would joke you could see my spine. I never thought about being a bigger person because with how skinny I was, it didn't seem realistic. I mean, my mom was fat. She was actually very big. And it was something she battled with her whole life, which caused her massive depression. She never wanted me to go through that. But she was also a baker and would bake cakes for every occasion. <laughs> Birthdays, Christmas, the Super Bowl, Tuesdays, it didn't matter. <laughs> if she had the itch, she started to bake. And her cakes were good. So damn good. And trust me, by 13, I had had a lot of cakes. And by the time I hit 13, you could start to see that I had had a lot of cakes. It started with a belly. I'd never had one before. It just kind of popped up out of nowhere. In fact, it happened so quickly, my mom took me in for testing to see if something was wrong. The doctors found nothing, but the trip itself was very tasking and it deserved a cake. The weight packed on a little slower during the high school years since I was always pretty active with basketball, skateboarding, and theater. I was always on the go, and I got up to about 215 pounds, which didn't seem too terrible, I guess. And I was also always willing to make fun of my bumbling belly, and that made me charmingly chubby, so it all just never really messed with me. And I had no reason to think that the weight would actually stick. My family would often toss it off as baby fat I would grow out of because I was tall, and that made sense because I was tall. More cake. However, by the time I graduated high school, beer and burritos replaced the extracurriculars. The slow weight gain became a little more steady, but I'd also begun performing on stage almost every day doing a show that demanded a lot of physical comedy, and I'd still play some basketball. So all in all, going from around 215 pounds to 245 pounds in a couple years didn't seem all that bad. Then in my 30s, I realized that getting drunk and eating burritos was pretty much my favorite thing, and so I did it every night. Also, did you know that when you're an adult, you can eat donuts whenever you want? Did you know that? <laughs> 
And if you're an adult and you work in a setting that sucks, people bring in donuts all the time so that you and your coworkers don't go insane and murder everyone. I can see it now. That little pink bakery box. What power that box holds, especially if you brought it in. You single-handedly saved lives with that pink bakery box. Everyone loves you. Unless you got one of those donuts with the nuts on them. What the fuck is that, all right? Why would you get that? Tammy, no one likes donut nut. So at the ripe old age of 33, the year they killed Christ, My diet was pretty much donuts, beer, burritos, and an occasional deli sandwich, so I essentially could say that I ate healthy once a week. I got big. I got fat. By 36, I was 275 pounds. At one point, I hit 281. It just never occurred to me it was happening, but it was, and I could definitely feel it. My clothes started to get uncomfortably tight, and I found myself doing the pull and tug for every shirt I'd put on. I could also feel my breathing changing. It became painfully aware that my diet of bread and sugar probably wasn't good for me. And the baby fat was now just normal guy fat. And I wasn't going to get any taller. <laughs> I basically lived in black and baggy clothes to hide the emerging roles. People would always be shocked when I told them how much I weighed. It didn't make any sense to them. I was a pretty mobile guy. I could move and pratfall and dance. Holy shit, can I dance? People would always say, you carry your weight so well. And I did, to them, not to me. I'd spend my nights avoiding the mirror when I changed. I'd wear shirts in the pool or beach or near any body of water just in case. I hated seeing myself unless I had clothes on. I just didn't know how it could have gotten to this. In our bedroom, in the house we were living in at the time, the bed lined up perfectly with a large mirror in our bathroom. So when I'd wake up every morning, I'd turn and sit up, and I'd be positioned perfectly to look to my right and see this weird teardrop shape that my body had taken. I felt and looked deflated. FYI, and fat people can back me up here, sitting, our worst look. Standing is best, but hardest, so laying down is preferred. <laughs> but nothing makes us look more fat than sitting or a wetsuit. Every morning, I'd wake up and see this teardrop-shaped version of myself. I would get sad. I would get depressed every morning. So I'd have pancakes and donuts and cookies and beer and pasta and cake and anything else I wanted. Then I'd get depressed that I was eating so shitty, which was the reason I was eating so shitty in the first place. I became addicted to these foods because they helped alleviate my depression, which I never really knew I had. Because when you're funny and charming, people just always assume everything's great, when really the opposite is almost always true. So if I was sad, I would eat, then get sad at what I was eating, then get depressed at how I looked. So I'd just go to sleep. Then I'd wake up. Oops, there's the teardrop in the mirror. Donuts, cake, beer, sleep, teardrop. Repeat and repeat and repeat. Then I pulled my back out reaching for a french fry. I was eating dinner with my much younger and much more attractive wife. And that's not me just being kind. She was and is those things, because although I was fat, I never had a problem dating out of my league. She is hot and smart. She is hot and smart. I am funny and chubby. That's the dynamic. <laughs> and on this night, she sat across from me while my back seized up, reaching my hand into a bag, trying to get the last couple of French fries. I stiffened like a board. I couldn't speak. The pain was unbearable. My wife thought I was having a heart attack, and rightfully so. Here's an almost 300-pound man who just seized up after eating a giant cheeseburger and fries, and she was scared. I was scared. It was time to do something. Oddly enough, I'd always liked running, so I decided to start jogging on my lunch breaks. For a couple of weeks, it felt great. In fact, I found the same release of joy from physical exercise as I did from food. It was amazing. But then one day, I went to a shower after a run and my chest started to hurt. I felt a sharp pain near my heart and I got dizzy. I sat down, I was able to catch my breath and right the ship, but for the first time, I legitimately thought I was going to die. 
right there at work with that pink bakery box still in view, I would die. I made an appointment with my doctor immediately. He ran some tests and told me everything looked okay. There was a slight hiccup on my EKG, so he wanted to schedule a stress test with cardiology. I said, okay, and he, and he had the nurse call me and tell them to give me the next available appointment. The nurse asked, <clears throat> how does August 24th work for you? I looked at my calendar and said, well, it's May right now. Uh-huh, so will that work? What time? <laughs> we have noon available. I'll have to move some things around, but I could probably make it work. <laughs> the nurse was not amused. Then my doctor told me I needed to lose some weight. However, until the stress test, I, couldn't, I, I shouldn't do any strenuous activity. The stress test was now four months away. Then how do I lose weight, Mr. Smarty Pants Doctor? He told me to change up my diet of donuts and beer and cake and burritos. <laughs> what an asshole. Of course, that doctor's visit was very difficult, and it deserved some sympathy donuts. So did the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Instead of jumping into a diet, I jumped into the thought that I now had four months until I actually needed to do anything. Perfect! Drink! That weekend, we had plans to attend the Scottish Highland Games. And through friends, we met a couple that were competing in the games, throwing tree trunks and hay bales and all the stuff you've always assumed Scottish people do. Ray and Angela. Angela was a bigger person, and Ray seemed to be fairly fit. They were extremely nice and told me I should compete in the game sometimes. I agreed. I mean, why would I want to throw a tree trunk? <laughs> then I did the patented, gotta lose a few pounds first. Everyone chuckled except Ray, who said if I was serious about it, we should talk. A month later, teardrop, donuts, beer, sleep. My wife, my much younger, much more attractive wife, who had seen me seize up at the thought that I was having a heart attack reaching for a french fry, finally said something. I don't care how you look. Never a great start. <laughs> I never have, I never will. I love you, but I want you to be there for our daughter. We can't lose you. Shit. <laughs> the next morning I called Ray. He asked me if I wanted to lose weight. I said, yes, very badly. Then he asked me the most important question anyone's ever asked, why? I gave him the usual answers you'd expect, to be healthier, for my family, etc. And he said, great, now why do you want to lose weight? I was stumped. Hadn't I just answered him? Ray started telling me how he'd lost 40 pounds in about four months just through changing his diet. That's it. No heavy exercise, no tricks, no powders, just eating the right portions of the right food. No donuts or cake or beer or burritos. His wife, Angela, had battled with weight her entire life. She was diagnosed with a condition where she was unable to lose weight in any kind of significant level. So she was placed on a diet plan after a diet plan from this doctor and that specialist, and she finally developed her own plan. She didn't care how she looked. She wanted to be alive. She wanted to figure out how to still eat good food that was healthy and in turn make her healthy on the inside. Fuck the outside. That, I yelled. That, that's what I want to do. I don't care if I look better or different or lose pounds, although that would be nice, but I want to live. I want to feel happy. I started the next week. After partaking in a farewell tour of an unbelievable amount of donuts and beer and cookies and burritos, <laughs> it was like I was getting ready to hibernate. In the first two weeks, I lost 15 pounds. My goal was to get to 250 pounds. I did that in 45 days. In 45 days, I lost 24 pounds just by eating right. When I showed up to the stress test, I had lost 33 pounds, and I made sure to tell everyone there this fact over and over again. <laughs> I can't tell you how laser-focused I was. I saw how proud my wife was when I turned down fries for apples and grapes. I saw how amazed my daughter was when I turned down my absolute favorite thing in the world, apple pie, so she ate mine. <laughs> About a month after the stress test, I went into Old Navy. Trying on clothes when you're a bigger person is pretty much the worst. It's like playing a game of Russian roulette with your feelings. I usually just bought a double XL and didn't care if it was too big or not. But now, I was down 40 pounds, feeling good. I tried on a suit jacket. I went with the XL, because let's not get crazy. <laughs> and it was too big. It was too fucking big. I ran out and got the L, the L. Not the L as in loss or loser, but the L as in motherfucking large. It fit. Woo! 
Thank you. Perfectly. I stood in the mirror and I didn't see a teardrop shape me. Instead, I saw actual teardrops falling from my face. The attendant asked if I was okay, and I leapt out of the dressing room and said, this is a large and it fits. And they were scared. <laughs> when all was said and done, I dropped 81 pounds. I had, thanks, sure. I had high blood pressure and was on medication for that for over a decade, but that was also gone. I feel like I need to make two things very clear. One, this was, and I hate using this word because it makes me sound like I'm on The Bachelorette, my journey. <laughs> it's mine, specifically. I'm not telling this story because it should be yours or theirs. In fact, I don't care what you do, as long as you're happy. A lot of people find happiness in different ways when it comes to their body. Some people don't care one way or another. Some people are fitness fanatics. And some people are huge and they don't give a fuck. And that's all the right answer. <laughs> Two, when I was down about 50 pounds, I remember hearing a song by Not A Surf called Do It Again. I'd listened to this probably about 200 times before, but this time a lyric popped out as if I was just hearing it for the first time. Maybe this weight was a gift, like I had to see what I could lift. Like when Ray asked months before, why did I want to do this? It all came together. I didn't care that I was fat. I cared why I was fat. My weight was a byproduct of my eating habits, which was a byproduct of my depression. Teardrop, donuts, beer, sleep. The weight was a gift, because now I had an answer. I may now be skinnier in my mind, but in my heart, I'm all fat. And don't ever let anyone tell you, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Because those people have never had a maple glazed old fashioned donut from Peterson's Donut Corner in Escondido. Dallas McLaughlin, everybody.